start out. So, again, um, the idea here, this is going to be, we're going to call it Tutorial Fort, unless I get a, uh, come up with a better name, or someone else here comes up with a better name, and yes, this will go to YouTube. Um, the idea here is, I know a lot of folks, whenever they play Dwarf Fortress, when they're trying to learn Dwarf Fortress, they will, they will play it in the background, and... Oh, they, they will watch a video in the background and play at the same time. Kind of playing along with that video kind of helps them out. Uh, so if something comes up, they can say, oh, we'll do this. That kind of thing. So that's kind of the idea behind this. We're going to do it on, I am on Twitch. As you can see, if you're on YouTube, that's clarifying that. Um, I want to make this a little more casual and less uh, intimidating, I suppose, would be the word to describe it. Door Fortress, Door Fortress when, you, when you first start playing, can be very... Intimidating and and uh, over mm, just complicated. Um, I think by having it here, we can be a little more relaxed, and hopefully, the other idea is that chat will help me out. Um, so if you guys see something that uh, I'm doing that uh, I'm not clarifying well enough, you will tell me. Uh, if you have other ideas, you will also tell me that as well. That's the plan, anyways. So we're gonna start out with uh, with uh, basically nothing. I have just installed the game. I'll put the link in the description. You can check where you can click. It'll download the game for you. Uh, we'll take you to the site to download the game, anyways. And uh, I have opened up the Lazy Noob Pack, which is the EXE that you get when you first run the game. Um, I do have Sound Sense running in the background. I'll cover that in just a second. Uh, where are we? We are. We are. Yeah, this is this is small. Make this bigger. Okay, so uh, this is what you get when you install the game. This is the, late, the starter pack right here, what I have installed. Um, yeah. So this is this. So whenever we first pull this up, I'm not going to mess with a lot of these things. Um, like population cap 200 is very high. Um, but no big deal. That's all right. Um, for your graphics, I always use Phoebus, which is what it like, defaults to, but that's fine. So I, and that's okay. Um, I've covered a lot of this stuff in the other tutorial that I made, so I'm not going to go over it too much uh, detail. Um, we do want to turn sound off, because we have sound sense playing. We also want to turn the music, the movie off. We don't need the movie. Uh, window is fine. And uh, we want auto saves to be seasonal. We also want compressed saves to be off. And, uh, yeah, that's okay. Everyone likes Space Fox. Um, so, the important one, DF hack. Make sure DF hack is enabled. Yeah, just reload the stream that happened for us. Uh, make sure that is a yes. Sometimes it's no when you when you download them, I noticed. We're going to turn on... So click a hack to toggle it. We want that one. What's enhanced gameplay? Has human merchants and elvish diplomats. Oh, yeah, sure. Add that one in there. We want uh, mouse... No, we don't want mouse controls. We want other automation plugins. Sure. Performance tweaks. Yes. So we want those green. Whenever you uh, start the game, these will automatically kick on. Um, okay, let's play. You may try, uh, I'm on both Twitch and on YouTube, so you could switch over to YouTube and maybe a little bit, uh, more stable. Usually Twitch is the better one. I'm just gonna line this thing up here with the screen. This is our Monday ritual of setting this thing up. That one I want. There we go. Do I want mouse controls? I don't remember. Is mouse? I don't think I want mouse controls. That's the one that lets you like s like scroll if you move the mouse to the side of the screen. It's very annoying. I just never used it. Um. Okay. So uh. So now we're on this menu. Um. First thing we have to do is we have to create a world. We uh, basically have nothing in the game right now. So we want to select our world that we're going to be using. So let's do that. And really, all this is just hitting enter. A lot. My music disappeared. But it'll come back in a minute. This is an alpha of Dwarf Fortress. Yes, yes. So, for your world, uh, my computer is not the greatest. I like smaller worlds. The bigger the world, the longer it takes to load some saves and things. Oh, it doesn't have scroll. Oh, all right, all right. Um, history, we, you can read basically what all these things do. It's just kind of personal preference. There's nothing really important here. Uh, but this is all fun. So, uh, anything about Dwarf Fortress, I should clarify this. Anything that you can do uh, is going to be uh, in green down here towards the bottom of the screen. Uh, any any key press that you can do will be there. So uh, if you're ever confused and lost, what do I do next? 
that's there. So we want Y to go. Hello, hello, cat. So we're gonna build our world now. Uh, this is a tiny world, uh, just because it'll, it'll go fast. You can see it is uh, it is generating the world here. We're at year 125, which it already generated. That was really that was a lot quicker than I figured it was going to be. The land of oh, the land of bells. Okay, this would have been perfect for my uh, my my Santa Claus playthrough. Uh, so world is created. We can go through and we can look through here if we want and see what all is going on. This is all in uh, in ASCII, so it's a little bit difficult to play. Um, but you can kind of hold your cursor over it. You can see the yellow X there. Like we have this plus sign here is the human town of Halithru. We also have some a road here running through this way to the human town of Omnor. Uh, we also have the Dark Goblin Pits of Stuzbubakaz. We have some more Dark Goblin Pits over there. What else we have? We have some... Looks like dwarves are over this way in the middle of the map. Oh, that's a Goblin Hillocks. Ooh. Land of Bells. We have the Tomb of Dilruthmthi. So the thing that's kind of amazing about Dwarf Fortress is the, uh, the, the uh, detail that goes into the world building and the story building. Every, like, civilization has... A, has founders and people that live in it and those people have stories and things they've killed and things they've done and and uh, it's quite crazy what's over here a goblin hamlet of Nesikmes and these are these are elves up here these yellow ones are elves all right anyways uh, we want to enter accept so it's going to uh, basically save the world for us so now the world is built if you played worm world basically that's the same thing we built the world now we're gonna go play in the world in high mountains, I don't think so. Not without masterwork. Uh, there's three different options. We want to do Dwarf Fortress. Dwarf Fortress is the building one. Adventure mode is like um, like an RPG, like a crazy RPG, actually. And the sound is playing. For that sound, um, you can go into utilities and run Sound Sense. That's what this is. And so I turned the music off in the game, so now it uses an external program that plays the sounds. Uh, it's really helpful because it also plays little noises and things. All right, it's time to pick our uh, our place. I should do uh, some sort of adventure mode tutorial, shouldn't I? All right, so, uh, and hey, Edgar, and hey, Adolfo, Adolfo. Um, your yellow X, you can see this is like, this would make more sense if my, uh, if I picked a bigger world. The, um, this is like the entire world view. This is the region view. But because it's so small of a world, it does the whole thing twice. And we have the local view. So this X, this is what's underneath this X. Right now we're on, looks like, like some sort of goblin encampment. And that's it right here. These are the goblins. And we're on a stream right there. We can see the different biomes or the different uh, ASCII symbols. We have like the dots and the, uh, and the quotes, marks. And as we move our cursor, we can, um, uh, we can see how it changes. Um, so, like, these gray things are mountains. It's not really that difficult. Gray is mountains. Green is trees and things. Uh, yellow is, like, deserty things, I'm assuming, down here. Yeah, tropical grassland. It all kind of makes sense. Um, what's this thing? I don't know. Uh, okay, so, to pick our place. Now, there's a... There's, an, there's a... Mm, I don't know how to say it. Look on the side over here, and these are what is going. What's going to be at that site where your square is right now? So let's find a nice. Let's find a nice spot. Here we go. In the mountains, we can use as it says on here, U M K H to move ourselves around. So K H moves us over this way, A K moves us this way, U goes up, M goes down. There we go. So we can kind of move our square around. This is our embark square. Um, you can see right now we are in lots and lots of mountains. We cannot embark in just the mountains because. Uh, not allowed. Um, but we can see over here on the side what kind of metals and what things are going to be around. So, like, say we built our embark right here. We can see we have a little bit of mountain. We have a little bit of uh, looks like a some sort of temperate wilderness and savanna in there as well. We also have a river for us. Um, for the materials that are there, we have some clay, which we can uh, and soil, which we can build like farms and things into. Uh, deep metals, and we have a fluxstone layer. Now, you can embark. I've done a uh, ocean embark, not in the ocean altogether, but like on the on the coast kind of thing. Um, none of this for a beginner. I don't think any of this is really important. I would avoid uh, anything that says aquifer, but um, yeah, just pick one. It's not a lot. I mean, just just pick one. It's not that big a deal. Um, 
for your first fort, you're not going to last long. So just, <laughs> just pick one. Uh, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. You can use Shift M and Shift H to make your embark a little smaller. I just moved it. Um, and go, let's go like right here. So we've got a river going through it. We have uh, some looks like grassland and some mountains. We can hit tab, we can see a little bit more. Uh, so we are the dwarves. We have humans, goblins, and elves next to us. We are at war with the goblins, as it should be. Um, the palace of... <laughs> Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> okay, that's my civilization name. Uh, yeah, This is going to be our relative eleva ev elevation. You can see the low parts. This kind of gives us an idea what the map will look like. <laughs> um, and a cliff indicator. These all kind of tell you. I mean, you hit tab, and it tells you what, it's, what you're looking at here. So we're in a temperate savanna. It is temperate. Trees are sparse. Uh, there's some moderate vegetation surrounding rolling Brook is bottom padded for the Palace of Balls in bottom padded. That's right. Um, <laughs> uh, so, we have, we have this This is good. Um, having some metal is nice to have around. Once you play the game a few times, then you can tweak these a little bit more and, and try to find better spots. But for right now, just take whatever. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, what else have we done? Oh, F1, F2. We can view our different biomes if we want. So, like, this is a temperate savanna. These, uh, these quote mark ones. Uh, we also have the mountain biome right here. There's no trees in the mountain. Just the two biomes that we are in right now. Uh, I'm not going to do Volcano because we, I'm trying to find something uh, easy. Um, and, uh, yeah, here's the F, Fire Desired Location, brings up a menu. And you can select what you want. So, like, if you don't want to be in Savagery... Oh, for instance, pink stuff is savage, evil things. Don't do that um, for your first fort. Do that whenever you know what you're doing and you want to die quickly. Uh, the only one I would say, like, turning off would be Aquifer. If you want to do with this, but that's not good. I went over this in the other video. You can watch that if you want to see that. Uh, here's a volcano up here. Very cool. Guys, right, so let's embark. Embark E. Okay, uh, so this is the... I've called, I've called this the Oregon Trail part of the game. Where'd my music go? Where'd my music? It'll start here in a minute. Uh, where, basically where we are... Yeah, the screen border is flickering. It stopped. Um... It's like Oregon Trail. We are seven dwarves. We're leaving our mountain home. We saw that that uh, dwarven fort uh, before. Well, now we are seven dwarves setting out to start a new home, and we have to. Ch we can choose who we want to come with us, or we can just take take it and just go with it. That's what I would remake for remake them in for your first time. Just take it. Uh, but if we want to prepare, we can go to this one. There's also some that folks have made, like the easy start for made for new players. Is always an easy easy one. Um, we can prepare and kind of show this off. So here's our seven guys. We have Locum, Moses, Led, Id, Fecode, Ushrir, and Kull. Our our uh, our six uh, seven peasants. If we want to give them skills, like let's say Locum, you are now a miner. We can uh, go over there, hit plus, and make him a novice miner. We can also do more or less skill in that. I typically don't usually put skills in my uh, in my intro dwarves, just because they'll get skills as they as they go on. Hey, Manifesto and Merlin. I don't know how you say your name, but I, I, I know you. I just don't know <laughs> how to say you. Um, so we got a miner and a woodcutter. That worked. That's fine. Uh, we can go to tab to go to the items. So this is where we're going to pick what is going to be coming with us. Uh, we have copper picks. We have copper battle axes. We have a steel anvil. Um, if we have options for an iron anvil, that is a better idea. We won't deal with that, though. We have all the food and all the ale that we are bringing with us. We have some large rat leather quivers, always important. Splints, wheelbarrows, step ladders. As you can see, we have a, a spare 190 points that we can spend. So something's not coming with us. Um, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, Adolfo, that's two yaks, two dogs, two cats, two turkeys, two chickens. Good idea. Um, you don't need the chickens. I wouldn't say. I don't think two turkeys and two chickens is necessary. Before you know it, you will have lots and lots of of chickens and turkeys. But yes, cats and dogs are very good. Ta dogs you can use to like guard your entrance from kobolds and things that try to steal things from you. Cats uh, are good to leave in your kitchen area to kill like rats and lizards and things that are uh, messing with your food. Um, but yeah, we can we get the 190 points. We can we can. Um, we can buy some things. So let's buy a girl dog and a boy dog. That works. Uh, we're also going to buy a cat, a boy cat, and a girl cat. And uh, what else do we want to bring? We can bring some chickens or turkeys or something. We'll bring a chicken. 
Well, we'll bring a girl, um, not a chick. We want, we'll bring two hens and a rooster. How about that? These are, these are, uh, cheap. They're only six. Yeah, the other thing, that's the other nice thing about having, um, lots of cats and dogs. You can use, the, you can use their bones and you can make soap out of them. It sounds terrible, but that's Dwarf Fortress. Uh, what else do we want? Anything else? We could bring something like an alpaca and use their fur, right? Um, we could also bring something like a cow and milk it. Um, how much do we have? We have 118 points left. I think what we'll do, this is like an intro like a, for beginners. So here's what we'll do. Um, we're going to bring extra seeds and ale. That's probably the better idea. So, ain't to add or subtract. It tells you everything down here. Add or subtract, minus, plus or minus. Uh, we want to add, we're going to add a bit more drink and a bit more plump helmet spawn. It's actually a good idea to throw in like one or two of these. Um, just because whenever you get like a dwarven ale, if you add one in, it's going to give you an extra barrel that it comes in. So, it's always a good idea to throw some extra in there. Um, plump helmets is uh, like a mushroom that you're going to be using a lot of. You'll get used to plump helmets. That's seeds, bags, thread. Um, I think everything else is alright. Is there anything else that I really need? Okay, okay, everyone wants a yak. Well, Edgar wants a yak, so we'll bring a yak. We'll bring a yak. Oh, I don't have enough money for that. Nope, no yak. Sorry. We'll bring an extra, extra dog. And just a bunch more ale. Probably a good idea. For a beginner, I would, I would just load up on the ale just to make sure that you don't uh, uh, die immediately. Okay, so we are good. We've spent all of our points. We have all of our stuff that we're bringing with us. We have our seven folks. Two of them are somewhat skilled. Uh, if we want to, we can come in here. We can we can name our fort. Uh, well, you know, we were Handle Tub is the name of our fort. Erashikum. Yeah, that sounds perfect. <laughs> uh, we also can name our group if we want. We are the Crested Barricade. Mm, that's kind of cool. I like it. Um, okay, anything else? Uh, to swim really wants me to bring ducks. Why? Ducks are like nasty and smelly and we don't need ducks. We have chickens. All right, let's embark. E for embark. And it will load us up and hopefully the music will start back. What happened to my music? It's very quiet in here. Oh, welcome to our new home. Where's he currently playing? There it goes, there it goes. Okay, you have arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidden wilderness beyond. Your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Kusoff. Biben. Biben is the, uh, so that's the Dwarven Fortress that we came from. Where, that's where our king resides, and uh, our trade folks will come from there. You'll see all this later. It's, uh, it's all going to maybe make more sense in a bit. Uh, there are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance. Whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings. Air of the dingoes. Get hungry. A new chapter of Dwarven history begins here at this place. Erishakum. Handle tub. Strike the earth. Alright. So, um, part, so, part of what I want to do with this with this series is kind of, uh, it's going to be for, like, people trying to play Dwarf Fortress, as well as people trying to understand Dwarf Fortress. So we're going to try to take things slow and explain what's happening and what we're looking at here. Um, right now, <clears throat> if we remember from looking at that Embark map, uh, we can, we have mountains. We, this is our mountain biome down here. We can see this is this is a mountain. You can kind of see it with this tile set how it looks like it's going down because this is going down to a, we have a river running here and we have coming up. This is all a flat surface, and then you go up each Z level goes up to the mountain, and we are embarked here, kind of on the side of a mountain. Uh, and this is the mountain going up here. You can see the trees starting to pop into view. Um, just basically everything you're kind of you're kind of looking down on everything. Think you know think Minecraft. I've mentioned this before. Think Minecraft, looking down on the world. You have each block is a different Z level, um, almost like two blocks is a Z level really. But um, yeah, so we can zoom in here a bit so we can kind of see what's going on. But we have our seven dwarves in here. We have our caravan right here. Our wagon is here. We also have like we have a stray dog here. You can see everything that you you can move your, use your mouse, click on things, and it tells you what it is. So like stray dog tame. He's a boy. We have a stray hen. Team. We have what's this over here? We have a horse. We have we have a couple. We didn't actually uh, bring horses, but they brought our uh, wagon with us. 
We also have Ezri Cat over there. He's a legendary climber. We have Moses over here. Does anyone want to be named after a dwarf? I can put you in there. I'll put you in there. That'll show off um, Dwarf Therapist. So, first thing we want to do is figure out where we're going to build our fort. Um, I think probably the best idea for kind of a beginner kind of understanding what's going on is try to keep everything on one level. I think it makes things a little bit easier to understand. So what we could do is we could come down here to this level. That way we have access to all these trees. You can kind of see the tree stumps as we go up. You can see the tops of the trees. Um, chop down some trees. That'll give us some wood. We also have a river here that we can fish at. We can build like into our fort like right in here and build our fort down this way. So we'll be like underneath the mountain. We'll be at the bottom level is where our entrance will be. But we'll have our uh, fort down uh, down this way. So um, that's probably where we will go. A um, couple of things to point out here. So we saw the trees here. This is a pear tree trunk. We have an ash tree right there. Um, these things are like we have gabbro boulders laying around. We have some kaniwa leaves. Kaniwa? Uh, blade weed. Rhubarb is out there. We have some prickleberries. Gabbro boulder. You can click on anything and it tells you what's what you are looking at. As for the... Um, the walls, we, this is sandy loam right here. Right in here, the gray stuff is gabbro, which is a stone. Um, you will become an expert in uh, in your stones in geology if you play much Dwarf Fortress. Oh, Dwarf Bob. Okay, yeah, let's name some dwarves. So this will we'll show off uh, Dwarf Therapist. So we'll go to our ladies and new pack, pull up Dwarf Therapist. Now this is um, kind of a, uh, a job assigner, I suppose, would be a best way to explain it. We'll show it off here. So we have our seven dwarves here. Everyone wants it. <laughs> we have seven dwarves here. We can see uh, Locum here. We have, we're have we in the Labor's Full tab. This is telling me all the different jobs that my dwarves can be. It's up here on the, at the top part of the spreadsheet. And my dwarves are right here. We can see who's a boy, who's a girl. Uh, Led is our expedition leader. Put your cursor over it for a while. It tells you he is a dwarf. He's 67 years old. He's... Uh, 50 centimeters, 50,000 centimeters tall? Is that what that's telling me? Is that weight? No, that's not weight, that's centimeters. Is that a lot? I don't know my metric system. I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, he is a peasant. He is an expedition leader. 50,000 seems like a lot of centimeters, though. Uh, <laughs> um, he is fine. He's not stressed. He is a competent speaker. He's a bit of a poet. He doesn't really have any skills because we didn't give him any skills. We can also see his personality. This is kind of like the Sims portion of the game. You can like uh, learn all about your dwarves, what things they like, what they would like in their bedroom if they have a preference for a certain stone, or maybe they're a fan of dog soap. Uh, and we can see what roles they uh, they like doing. So we're gonna name some folks. Um, so I gotta roll this thing back up. So we have Pop Destruction was one of them, wasn't he? Uh, Marius. We're going to put Marius in. So, so, Led, we're going to name you Marius. You were the first one. So, we just... I should have just done that slower. So, we go cursor over the guy. Right-click. Set nickname. And it'll pop it over here. Once we hit uh, Commit Changes, it'll it'll put it in there. Boink. So, there we go. Marius. Expedition Leader. Uh, who else do we have? Marius, we have... Um, the Preclues. We're going to call you Preclues. Oh, sorry. Preclues. I took, just gave her the Expedition Leader. <laughs> So we'll put three clues in here. Ooh, clues. Um, name one Bob. Yes, Bob. Bob. We'll go over this in just a moment. Sean Bean. All right. I don't know if he's gonna make it past a day. Name one, Schutzstaffel? Uh-huh. What are you trying to do? Let me make sure we haven't. Name one, Merlin. All right. You can be my uh, my woodcutter, Merlin. Cubic size, how much volume they occupy. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Okay, Simir is cubed. Uh-huh. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. There we go. Uh, is that everybody? Did I get... I think I have one more. Anyone want to be in here? I'll put myself in here. Um, oh, you know we need? We need Cog. Cog is from a very early Let's Play. So Cog's going to come in here. 
Okay, so we have Schulstoffel is our miner. We have Merlin as our woodcutter. No one else has any skills. We can see the ones that are highlighted are the ones doing or assigned to that job. So if you want to say you want cog, your job, I really want you to be my mason. Click on him. There you go. It uh, highlights a blue, which means that he will be a, uh, a now a mason. Uh, so when that job comes up, when we build a mason table, he will be the one going and doing it. Sean Bean does everything at the moment. Poor guy. Yeah, we don't need skills. We'll get skills in a moment. A lot of folks like to embark with skills, but I don't quite understand that. It was just like the first day you'll get all those skills back. Okay, so anyways, we're going to build our fort. Someone asked why we aren't doing a tower. And uh, because this is a tutorial thing, we're going to try to keep it... Um, simple. I'm trying to keep everything on one level so it's a little bit easier because Z levels are difficult. At least for me, Z levels are really difficult to begin with. Uh, okay, so time to dig. So we want to... All of our options are over here on this side. Is that too small? It looks okay. Uh, the ones that are going to be important are D designations and D mine. Once you hit one key, like D designations brings you into a new menu. P for stockpiles brings you into a new menu. So we're going to go D designations. We're going to go to D to mine and we're going to select. Now we can use our cursor and do it like a pro, enter, enter, or we can do it with our mouse and we can dig that way if we want, whichever is easier. Yeah, we'll get to Z levels. We just, I just don't want, I want to keep the most of the fort on one Z level. Um, so then these ones that are grayed out are, have been, have been marked to be dug. So our minor dwarf, who was that? Uh, Showstoffel. We'll come over here. And start mining this out. We should have... We brought two pickaxes, so there should be two dwarves with a, with a pick. <laughs> yes, don't listen to Adolfo. That's for sure. Uh, so let's dig in here a ways. Let's just have like a big hallway. How should we... We should we mark this out? Um, I'm going to mark this here. These uh, these triangle things are ramps, so it's like ramping up to the next level. That's kind of what that's, what that's showing. Um, let's have like an opening here. Something like that. So as you walk in, you'll have like a big opening area, and then we can um, we can go off from there. Maybe even bigger than that. There we go. Okay, so uh, that's been marked. Now we need to make sure we get some wood. So we're going to set again D for designations. We're going to chop down trees. Basically, all the first stuff you're going to be doing is chopping down trees. Uh, if you want to move faster, you can hold Shift and move your cursor faster. You can also do this with your mouse. But we're going to mark. Just a big square area. All these trees are going to be marked. We can also click them if we want to mark, mark them to be chopped. Uh, we can also pick some berries as well. Uh, we want to go and gather some plants. We can hit P and do the same thing. Uh, like all those prickleberries and things that we saw laying around, we can shift, uh, move over, hit enter, pick everything up. Uh, okay, that's good. So now we will see our dwarves kind of hard to see because they run down the mountain. But you can see them running down the mountain. They are... We got... Who's this? Cog is uh, felling a tree at the moment. You can see what he's doing. We also have... Merlin has just taken out a tree. We have... How many axes did we bring? Oh, you're gathering plants. Preclus is gathering some plants. We've got Sean Bean over here gathering some plants. We have... Bob is digging. Along with Schulstoffel, I'm assuming. Yep. Schulstoffel. Yeah, RimWorld really is a, a useful tutorial. If you've played RimWorld then you kind of have the basics of Dwarf Fortress. I mean, it's a, it's a base builder like anything else. So it's not really that... It's not a difficult game. It's just it's just getting over the UI. The UI is terrible. We should have two... We should have two woodcutters. Um, one of the things that you used on... That I set up with Blaze uh, Lazy New Pack was the automatic job assignments. Um, this is something that once you get a little more used to the game, you could probably turn that off and manually set your job assignments, like I was saying before, where you, you click and, and uh, turn them on. Um, you can see it just changed. Because I have the automatic job assignments, it'll actually automatically assign jobs. I mean, pretty self explanatory So you don't have to really deal with this too much. It's kind of a crutch. Uh, I know some folks really don't like that. Um, it's raining now. But uh, for newbies, I think it's there's enough to deal with right now. Go ahead and turn that on and save yourself a bit of a headache. So we're going to clear this area out. Our first priority, now that we've gotten some wood chopped down, what is this? Hamster remains. My cats are doing a good job killing hamsters. Good job, cats. Um, 
first priority is going to be getting a farm up and running. Because we have only so much booze and so many seeds and so many plump helmets, so many mushrooms to eat. So we need to make sure we get that up and running before too long. Uh, but we should do something I didn't do before, which is hit U. U is going to be... Uh, it's going to show us all of the living things on the map. The first option is... Uh, all the citizens. We have seven citizens in here. Um, yeah, sure, because we have... I'm on uh, YouTube also. Well, the report this isn't that hard. The UI is hard. Um, next up, we have all our pets and livestock. We have all of our horses, our roosters, our hens, and cats and dogs. That was all right there. We can see we have ten of them. Others, this is going to be what other animals are wandering around the map. We have a wombat here. Uh, somewhere, if we want to see where he's at, we, can, we have the option here. We can hit V to view the unit. We can see it's a small, stocky animal. It's found from the mountains to woodlands. Hair is brown, skin is a crew, eyes are black. Or we can hit Z to go to the unit. So he is under the cursor. There he is. We have a wombat. We can zoom in. Scroll and zoom in. There's a wombat right there. I don't think he'll hurt anybody. He's just not running around. And dead. Nothing is dead. It's still year is still young. I'm sure Sean Bean will be in here before too long. All right, um, so that's that. Um, now we got we got to figure out where we're gonna farm. So we could farm on stone, but it's a difficult process. Uh, it's a tedious process. So we, I'd rather find some uh, um, dirt to farm into, and I think we're about to find it in here because we have mushrooms. We want to we want to grow the mushrooms in dirt. It has to be indoors. We can grow outdoors if we want to, but we're dwarves. We drink. Mushroom ale. Plant gathering zone. So we'll go over zones. So I is zones. Where is it? I is zones. So we can just like mark out a zone if we want to. Here we'll do a um. We can do a plant gathering. So same thing. Use your X. Hit enter. Make a big box. Hit enter. Now these are the different options that we can do in this zone. Now this is sort of just like a um. An automated um, gathering kind of thing. Um, you can also set your animals to be in this zone. That's sort of a. Well, we'll explain it here. Um, for instance, we can mark it as a water source. And what that means is that our dwarves will come over here and they'll use this pond, it's blinking right now, as their water source. So if something needs water, like for instance, someone gets hurt and they need water at the doctor's office, they'll grab the water from here. If you're trying to make a pit, they'll grab it from this spot. Uh, you can also turn it into a fishing spot. They can come out here and they'll fish in this place. Uh, we can gather and pick fruit from here. There's lots of fruit and everything in, in this area. We can do that. We also have a garbage dump. If there's like hamster remains, we can toss them out there. Um, pen and pasture, we'll go over in a second. Pit pond, we may not ever cover. Um, if you want to... We may cover pit pond in a bit. Um, if you want to get like sand blocks and farm, not farm, but use sand as a resource or clay, you can do it this way. You mark an area to be gathered from um, sand or clay. Uh, we can also mark it as a hospital. if we want. That'd be like an indoors hospital uh, or animal training, which we'll go over also. For um, gathering, picking fruit, we can also hit G. You can see this option came up whenever we click that. Set the gathering information. We can tell them what they're going to do. They will pick fruit from fruit trees. They will pick berries. They will pull the uh, tubers. They will also gather fallen fruit. If I want them to, for instance, not grab fruit from trees, I can hit T, and then they won't do that. Hmm, a fathering zone. I haven't read that. I have... Oh, I don't know about that one. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what zones can do. Uh, what we can do with this one... I mean, we can do that. It's fine. They can gather stuff. We can also use it as a fishing spot. There's probably no fish in there. That's pretty tiny. Um, I will use... I'll show off pen and pasture also. So we'll hit in, which highlights pen and pasture. We can hit shift in for pen pasture information. Now this is going to be where we select what animals go into this area. Basically our dwarves will gather up our animals and they'll throw them into this zone and they will stay here. It's a way of keeping your animals safe. Um, you don't want your animals to be, I mean it's a terrible place right now obviously it's outside of our fort. But let's say we wanted our, like we find a nice area that we can, they can wall off and we want to keep our horses in. We don't want them getting you know, killed by goblins or something. So we mark off an area and then we force our horses to stay in here. We can just Plus and minus rotates through and hit enter, enter. If there's a plus on it, it means they will be moved into here. 
Um, anything else? That's good. Our horses are other animals. We can, we'll find a new spot for them. But for now, we'll just stick our horses in there. We can hit escape when done. And you'll see a couple of our dwarves will grab our horses. You can see them if we watch for a moment. Maybe. There go. They're going to grab a fruit. Oh, we can see. Here we go. Here we go. We've got Marius and Cog are grabbing the horses and bringing them into the pasture. These guys are going to gather some fruit out here. Okay, we'll let them continue digging. Um, I'm going to dig a bit more, though. And do something like... This. And maybe, like... This way. Maybe something like that. We're going to make up a... Um, um, a farming area. Uh, we can hit X. If we don't like where we marked off, we can hit X, which will remove our designation so we can remove some things. So, like, say we don't want... Oh, I don't want to go that far. We can do that. Um, uh, goblin attacks every night or so. No, goblins attack, like... Mm, once every year or so. Year or two. Once, the, more, the longer you're there, the more they will come. Horses aren't really used for anything. They used. They pulled my wagon into here, and that's basically it. I'm hoping to get some dirt. Otherwise, we may show off how to um, how to make a farm in stone, which I suppose would be an okay. To, okay tutorial. Three years in, no attacks. That's not uncommon. One way of uh, of provoking attacks would be to make sure you are trading. Um, make sure your trade. I'll show that off in a second. Um, here we go. What is this? Sandy loam. Excellent. So we can plant in here. I'll sh uh, show that in a second. Um, let's see. Adolfo, I was talking about this. So we can hit Z. Where is it? Z is status. And this is sort of a general overview of the fort. We don't have a broker. We'll go over that in a moment. Um, but this shows us all of the stuff in our stores. Our meat, fish, plants, seeds, drink. This is all kind of a, a good way of keeping an eye on that. We can see what our people are doing as well. Uh, we can go to tab, or over, and we can see the kitchen stuff. We have all these, these are different, um, vegetables that we have in our fort at the moment. We also have seeds, the different amount of seeds that we have, the drinks, and the meat. We have a couple of cave fish, we have some fox meat. Um, hey, thanks, Robo. Yeah, raise your fort wealth. So that, so if you want an attack, raise your fort wealth, which I don't have a broker, so I won't really show me right now, but if you trade things away... That'll help that out. Um, what was I going to do? Oh, kitchen. An important one. Plump helmets. We do not want to cook our plump helmets. We can brew them, but we will not cook them, which we're not brewing anything right now. So we're going to curse over it and hit C to turn cook off. Um, basically, the reason we're doing that is because plump helmets, they're mushrooms. And they're a very easy mushroom to make um, and turn into brew. So our dwarves, once we get a still going, I'll show this a little more. They will take the plump helmets and they will press them, I guess. I don't know what to do. How do you how do make brew out of uh, plump helmets? Um, and make brew out of it. And then you get seeds back. Once you, If you brew it, you get seeds back. If you cook it, you don't get the seeds. And so if we were to cook all our plump helmets, we'd run out of seeds and then we would die because we'd run out of food. So it's kind of a common thing um, for early fort death is your plump helmets disappearing. So just make sure you turn that off. Uh, the question mark next to the numbers is I don't have a broker with a good skill. Uh, well, I don't have a broker at all. Once I get a, um, is broker the one I want? Book, once I get a bookkeeper. Sorry, I'm confusing myself. Broker tells you what, uh, is your trade person. Bookkeeper is the one who keeps your numbers. So once I get a bookkeeper with some, uh, decent skills, I can, I can tell him to do better, a better job at this. <laughs> Basically. We'll get there in a moment. Um, where were we at? We were at farming. Okay. So, our most important thing to begin with is farms. So, we're going to build, new menu, we're going to B, where's B at? B building, we're going to build a P, where's P at? It's a farm. There it is, farm plot. Now, it's only going to give us one X. If we want to make this X bigger, we can't, it, this is a strange menu. We can use the UMKH thing to make it bigger. So we want like a row of plants. We can make a big area of plants to make this a bigger um, spot. So we can set this one here. And now it's going to be tilled. So it's going to be tilled, essentially. If we want to do that again, we can do a second one. You can see if I'm here on the stone, it doesn't work because there's no mud to farm. 
So let's make another one. Let's make two farm plots right here. There we go. And so one of our dwarves will come over and they'll till that soil, and then we can we can select what seeds we want to put in there. To get out of these menus, I'm hitting I'm hitting escape. And you can tell when the game's paused, it's up here. Okay. So here we go, we've got uh, who's this? We got Sean Bean and Preclues over here are digging me some soil and tilling the soil. Yeah, common new yeah, common newbie mistake. Is cooking your uh, cooking all your booze away. Okay, so now we have we have freshly tilled soil. Now we can select what we want to put into it. Now we have four options. We have four different seeds. We can select dimple cups, plump helmets, quarry bushes, or sweet pods. Um, the easiest way of doing this, I don't think it's and maybe it's a plan later on in the game to have different plants underground have a issue with the season. I know it does above ground, not not below ground. So, anyways, um, plump helmets are the important ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to do plus minus highlight the plump helmets, and we're going to hit shift enter because that is going to set us for all seasons. So all four seasons, that will have plump helmets growing in it. If we want to change it, say, for instance, in the A, we hit A, which highlights spring, we can grow dimple cups. And then maybe in the summer, we want to grow... Oh, hey, we do have more things. We can grow some cave wheat. And then in the uh, autumn, we want quarry bushes. And then in the winter, we're going to go back to plump helmets. So that's what we can do. So every spring, it'll uh, switch it around. Yeah, let's do an above ground fort. So above ground, which would be above ground, we can set this up. We'll just set up a small one right here. And same thing, we're going to do that, but it won't have the same stuff because the below ground fort is going to have mushrooms. The above ground fort will have things like asparagus and strawberries and above ground foods. Look, you can see everybody. This is because auto labor is on. Everybody is <laughs> is putting the seeds in the ground right now. Uh, I also want to show, this is why, is anyone getting any skill? All right, we got a few skills coming in. This is why I don't give them skills to begin with. I suppose if you give someone like like your miners good skill, they would mine a lot faster. Yes, this live stream will be saved. It'll go to YouTube. All right, so next important thing. We have, you can you can see, I'll zoom in here, you can see the green stuff. That means these farms have plump helmets. You can actually cursor over. There's someone, there's a bunch of plump helmet seeds laying on the ground there. Um, you can see the seeds are uh, being planted. Um, so we have farming. Now we need to, we need a still. The, probably the most important thing for a dwarven fortress is your booze production. So to make sure we are mining, which I was not. Enter, enter. We're gonna just create a little area here. We can actually make a little doorway there and a doorway there to make it fancy looking. And uh, we're gonna put a still in here. So this will get dug out eventually. Oh, what is that? I just got that noise. Equipment mismatch. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that noise, let's deal with that noise. I actually left that noise in there because I wanted to explain it. As you play the game, you will learn to hate that noise. Let me pull it up here. Uh, this is part of the sound sense. It's just like a uh, an alert noise. But let me pause where it makes nothing is happening. So into lazy new pack, into utilities, and under sound sense and packs. It's a it's a long ways in here. And default, there is this late native flute noise. This is that boop boop the noise. Uh, as you get into the game, you that noise will go on over and over and over, and you will really hate it. So we're going to delete it. Maybe. No. We're going to just move it out of the file. Because I'm playing it. Won't we move it? Uh, maybe not. Okay. We will do that. <laughs> Sometimes it lets me do it. We will do that uh, next time before we start playing. Just make sure you delete that file if you don't want to hear that noise. Do rolls not labor it better. Oh yeah, I, did, I guess I didn't explain Dwarf Therapist real well, did I? So Labors kind of shows us, like, like assigning them the jobs and all that. Rolls will tell you, um, it actually probably is a better one to use. Uh, it tells you, like, their numbers, the, how good they are at certain things. So, like, for instance, Merlin is a very good woodcutter. He has a 93 in it. 92.98% uh, at woodcutting. So he is the one to be doing that. Uh, red numbers are low, high numbers are black. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a good way of explaining 
those kind of things. All the other ones we have, military, we haven't got there yet. Social is going to be just the social skills um, for like things like running in, in or whatever. <laughs> Attributes would be like strength, agility, that kind of stuff. It's all roles. Uh, these are all different animals that we have. We can manage our animals within here. And our health menu, which we will check as well uh, once we get attacked by something. Uh, okay, my still is here. The game will not pause. That's a problem. Let's B build. We're going to go into the workshops menu, which we'll spend a lot of time in. Uh, w, W, where is it? I don't know. Somewhere in here. Workshops. Which brings up another menu of all the workshops that we can make. The uh, One of the most important ones is our still, which we're going to place right here. Now, an important thing to watch, um, you can kind of see how eight of these squares are bright green and one of them is a dark green. That means that you cannot walk through that square. They can walk through any of these other squares, but they can't walk through that one. So don't put that in a doorway like that. That would be uh, not able to be walked through. So we're going to just set it right there. Now it gives us the option with everything you build. It gives you an option of what you want to make the make it out of. And uh, we can just use Gabbro. There's Gabbro laying right here. You can see. So we just pick up these Gabbro boulders and build the still out of it. And um, they should do that in a moment. And then we'll set up our still. Who is this? Who is this? This is Merlin. Merlin, still builder man. All right, so our still has been built. Now we're going to select Q. Where's Q? Q, Q, Q. I don't know where it is. Set building tasks slash preferences. This is another menu that we'll use basically to look at anything. I, I don't think I mentioned that before. That's the one I used for um, my farms. So we'll come up here to our still, hit Q, go to the still. Now we have this new menu here. This is where it's going to ask me what I want to do at the still. Right now we're doing nothing with this still, but we can hit A to add a new task. We can tell it to brew drink from plants. Enter. And then we want to do that forever. We can just hit R, and that, will, that is repeat, which means that over and over and over again, they will just continually make that, make uh, brew drinks from plants. If we want to set up a workflow, we can do that. Um, Alt W. I'll show this off now. This is a way of managing your stuff. When your fort gets bigger, this is really important. Um, it's a way of managing your supplies and inventory a little bit easier. Basically what this does, it's, it's going to tell me... Yes, we want to enable it. Uh, shift A, add limit. It's going to give us an option of how many uh, drinks you want. So right now, the constraints are 5 to 10 drinks. We have 89 drinks at the moment. So... Whenever we hit, when we go down to four drinks, we will, somebody will come in here and make up to ten drinks. And then it'll go down, once it goes back down to four, they'll come back and make back more up to ten. We want more than that. Um, so we can just hit shift R to change our range. And we want something like, let's do 50 to 100 for now. So, and we have 89 right now, so no one's going to mess with it. But once it goes down to 49, someone will come in and start brewing some drinks up to 100. And so you'll always have at least 50 drinks in the fort. Okay, that's workflow, which you can use for a few different things. You can see, uh, if I cursor over it, there's an S byte, which means the job is suspended, which means that no one is doing it at the moment, uh, because I have enough drinks in the fort. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's progress a little more here. Let's dig out a bit, of, a bit of things. We want a, uh, like, a dwarven bedroom area, right? Our dwarves need to sleep somewhere, so let's dig this out. And let's make a bedroom up this way. How about that? We'll build all of our bedrooms over this way. Right now we only have, what, seven. So there's no reason to get too crazy. But we'll do that. Um... We also need to work on some stockpile rooms. So we have our main entryway. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this just yet. Just yet. I'm going to leave it empty for right now. We'll have bedrooms over on this side. We can have our farming set up over here. We're going to need like a workshop area for things like carpentry and masonry. Uh, we also need a lot of stockpile rooms. So what we will do is we will build... I think actually we'll use this hallway. We'll make it like a 3 by hallway. So our bedrooms can continue being up this way, but we can have, like, stockpile rooms and things over here. So we'll just make a big X, a big X, big open area here. We can have our carpentry shop and, like, our mason shop back here. We can have our stockpiles somewhere around this way as well. 
Uh, we can also set a stock power room like right in here. When we have a little spot there, we can set up a opening here so that our drink, our food, and all that can go this way. And oh, you know, actually, that would be better as a um, some sort of like a dining room. That's what we'll do. And then we can set up our our food stock pile over here. Sorry, my forts are always very ugly. I'm trying to make I'm trying to make them prettier. I'm just not good at it. Okay, so we just planned out all of our digging. Engrave your fortress history. Fortress doesn't really have any history at the moment. We've only been here for a month. Okay, we've got uh, Bob and Sulsafel digging out our food room. Now, your dwarves will always, when you designate a bunch of things to do, they will always do the last thing first, which is why they're digging out this first. Hey, Nick. Uh, it's not an easy access. Are you talking about? Are you talking to me or someone else? It's not easy access. We're gonna put a couple doors there, and then we'll have a nice defended area. In fact, you know what we didn't do? We're gonna hit D and we're gonna hit Z to remove the ramps, and we're gonna remove these ramps right here. So we're gonna go remove all of those. This will clear out these ramps, so maybe a little bit less uh, easy to just pop into our fort. So we'll dig those out. So then to go from this level to this one, there's like a there's not an easy ramp up. But uh, once we get these done, we'll set up some uh, stockpiles. Now, back to our our above ground plants. You can see we have no seeds, so I can't show too much of this stuff. But you can see the different options now of growing from up top from below. It's basically the same. It's just the different types of plants that you can grow. I don't have any seeds at the moment, so I can't really deal with it. But if we gather plants, we can we can use that. Yeah, the stories are crazy. Um... Let's talk about a little bit of that. So let's find, let's find Merlin here. So Merlin, we can uh, same as we did before with that wombat. Is he still here? He is still here. It's like a pet. Um, we can we can hover over any of our dwarves and we can go to we can either jump to the unit, hit Z. We can there's Merlin hanging out here by the wagon, or we can hit um, V view unit and we can see his thoughts and preferences. We can see his relationships. We can also customize his name. Uh, relationships. He is uh, he's in love with Preclues, and his uh, deity is Zar, and everyone else is just friends of his. Uh, enter thoughts and preferences. There aren't enough chairs. It's annoying. Now this is a good way going through your dwarves and, and seeing what they are thinking about is a really good way of, of kind of uh, telling you what you need to be doing, what you are missing in your fort. Um, this it's very detailed. It's it's kind of amazing. Um, I fix my webcam there. Uh, it, it's a very good way of, of telling you what you are missing in your fort, and uh, so he's complaining about not of chairs. She feels fondness talking with a friend. She's annoyed with a lack of chairs. She felt tenderness talking with a lover. She has a lover here. Uh, she felt satisfied at work. She felt satisfied at work. She fork during due to inebriation. Annoyed having having a drink without using a goblet, cup, or mug. Annoyed getting caught in the rain. Fell in love. Or felt love as she was caught up in a new romance. Oh, it's a new romance. That's exciting. Self-satisfied after felling a tree. So she is telling us we need tables and we need drinks. Uh, it also tells us that she is a faithful worshiper of Zar, which will come in important uh, later on. This is yes, this is version 43, which means we have um, taverns, we have inns, and we have temples that we can build. Um, so that'll come in important. Uh, she's a citizen of the Palace of Balls. She's a member of the Crested Barricade. That's me. And arrived at Erishikum at the 15th of Granite, which was the year we began. 57 years old. We can we can see her detail, how she looks. She's slow to tire. It tells us kind of her traits. Susceptible to disease. She likes pudding stone, silver, bloodstone, canaf fabric. So when we build her bedroom, if we want to spend a lot of time with Merlin here, we can like give her a bedroom that she would really like, something that she things that she likes and values, and yes, the Palace of Balls. That's right, Leon Dragon Cat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you could you could spend the whole game playing this. This is this is what is makes Dwarf Fortress, I think, such a a, a game that is so well liked by so many people, is because it's not just a base builder. You can play the game differently. If, like, if you want to focus on your dwarves more, if you want to focus on just having a massive fortress more, you can do that. But there we go. So, yeah, we need some. Uh, we do need some of that, and we'll get there. Um, 
what I was going to do there, right? That was going to be my... This is going to be my stockpile, and this is going to be my, my dining area. Is, is that what I was saying? I think it's a little bigger. Something like that. There we go. We'll dig that out. We'll make this a uh, proper dining room. We also need... We desperately need a mason's workshop. So, I'll show off some uh, stock or some uh, carpentry stuff in a moment. I can't believe I haven't built it. We've been playing this for an hour and I haven't built a carpentry workshop yet. Man, this game is complicated. <laughs> Ugh, cold. Alright, so uh, we'll, we will set this up as a, um, a dining room, but I don't have any chairs or any uh, tables or anything. Am I reading what? I see your palace of balls compliment or uh, thing. If they can't cook plump hummets, does that mean they can't eat it? Um, yes. They have other things to eat, though. Um, you can see everything else has been eaten. We still have our 20-ish plump hummets, but everything else has been eaten. Because we are being very slow and not making a kitchen yet. We are out of seeds because... Alright, so this is another uh, common issue. Um... We're not cooking our plump helmets, but we are brewing them. However, we have... Remember we were talking about how many um, drinks we have. We have 89 drinks. and But we're not going to brew any more. Um, we planted all of our seeds to make the brew, so to get us up to 89 brew. Um, now we have no seeds, and we won't be making any more. But once we get down to like 49 barrels, or ale... Then we will start brewing more, which will give us seeds to plant more. Does that make sense? I think. I don't know. It didn't make sense to me. But whatever. <laughs> Alright, so this is uh, this is mostly stockpiled. So let's work on stockpiles here. So let's hit P. We're going to go stockpile. We're going to go to a food stockpile. F for food. Now, if we want to select this a little bit more... Um, picky about this we can do that so let's make a stockpile right here and then let's use our Q go over it and hit S for change settings so this is a food stockpile number one we're gonna change the settings though right now it is allowing all foods into here if we want to say make this just a drink stockpile we want to be a little more organized than just having all food in one spot then we can do that we can um, Block all, B, and we can go down to drinks. We have drinks from plants and drinks from animals. We can hit enter. Uh, no, P. We hit P. Permit drinks on both of those. So we have like animal drink would be mead, and then plant drink would be all of our beers and things. So that will be just a booze stockpile room, and then escape, and that's it. So then that will be all that. Then we'll move food into another uh, area. We'll do that a little more. No, doors cannot mine without picks. I want to make it D dig. There we go. Now you can see them all bringing all the barrels in. This is all barrels full of uh, of booze. You can see this is a dwarven air ale barrel. They're all ale. <laughs> uh, you can see some plum helmets are uh, are now uh, spawning. You can see the purple things. Yeah, you always at least have two pickaxes, certainly. You should default with two pickaxes. Hey, Jose. Once we get this dug out, we'll make another stockpile with just food down here. So we can keep us a little more organized. If you want to keep your fish and all your other things organized separately, you can do that as well. But uh, that's a little crazy. <laughs> a little tedious. Let's dig out a spot. Right. Dig there, just to have an opening there. We're going to put our uh, workshops in this way. Yes, dwarves can have children. Children though are the worst. Okay, this is dug out. We're going to make our food stockpile now. So we're going to go back to F for food and select all of this. Actually, let me show you a different way of doing this. Uh, P for stockpiles. We can go to C for custom stockpile and then T for custom settings. And we want to enable food, but we're going to forbid the drinks. So now we have basically the same thing. But if you have like something specific you want to do, you can do it that way. Escape and 
enter. So that'll be our food stockpile. Thanks, Icy, Icy Kush. Yes, dwarves can have children, and uh, everything can have children. You can see we are putting our pump helmets just over here. We have some fish over here. We have fox meat. Delicious. Now, typically, I've been... This has been... How long have we been here? We've been here for three months, and I still don't have doors on my fort. So, um, be a good idea to work a little faster than I am, but that's okay. We'll take things slow. Because if, like, something were to attack us, we would be dead. Right now, it's just that's just that. Oh, it's an eagle. The wombat has left us. Now we have an eagle out there flying around. If you ever get lost and you uh, can't find your way back to your entrance, just hit F1, and it'll take you back to your wagon. You can set these hotkeys up actually. I don't know if I ever did. I ever mention that shift uh, comma is up, and shift period is down. Probably an important one. Or greater than less than signs changes your your Z level. Uh, but if you want to set up a different hotkey, like I say, I'm always here. I want this to be a hotkey. I can go to Shift H for hotkeys. And uh, we're going to make this F1. So we can hit F1 to go to there. We can change it if we want to like change it to whatever hotkey. F1. And then we can hit Z. Zoom here. So now, if we like come over here and we hit F1, we're going back. There we go. Back here. Yeah, 12. 12 is when children become adults. A child becoming a mayor at 12. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so we have our food stockpile set up. We are we are still brewing. How much brew do we have? We have 80 drink still. You know what? I'm actually going to bump that down just a bit. Um, Alt W and Shift R. We're going to change this to like I want at least 40 to No, I don't want to don't want to change that. Um, 40 to 80, we'll say that. That doesn't change, really change anything. But once it goes down to 40, 50. Diggy, diggy hole. So we're going to dig this out, hopefully quicker. I mean, that may be a bonus of why you want to give your, your diggers a bit more skill. How are they doing right now? Three dwarves, laborers. All right, here we go. Bob is now a level 3 miner, and Schulstoffel is a level 4. Very exciting. We have no other professions because we're not doing anything else. <laughs> Adolfo, is that Dwarf Fortress, or is that in uh, just everyday life? Oh, with this webcam. All right, so we have an opening over here. Let's build. We're going to go back to the W workshops area. We're going to make ourselves a mason first. And we're going to throw him over here. Just keep an eye on those uh, darker colored squares. We're going to throw our mason right... Uh, you know, I think... Is that a good spot for it? Let's put it, like, right here. Eh, it doesn't matter. That's fine. And we're going to make it out of Gabbro. Gabbro, this is telling me this. Gabbro within three squares right here. We can also grab the logs if we wanted to. They're 34 squares away. Gabbro is fine. We're also going to build a... Carpenter's shop. We're just going to go right next to it. We'll put a gap there. And uh, that's fine for now. Now with the mason, we're going to use our mason to build things out of uh, out of stone. All this gabber we have laying around, we'll clean that up so it'll be a little bit nicer looking. But um, they'll make things like doors and tables and chairs. Uh, we could do those things at our carpenter shop as well. But carpenter shop we're going to use for things like beds. So we do the same thing as we did before with the steel. We're going to hit Q and ho hover over the mason shop. We're going to hit A. And these are the options that we can make here. We can make rock blocks, which turns those uh, just hunks of stone into a block, a proper block, which we can use to do things like make uh, walls and floors. Um, just a little more efficient way of doing it. Um, we want... I'm going to make four chairs. Oh, let's make our doors first. We're gonna, we, want, we want two doors. A, enter. A, enter. And we can F plus and minus change. We also want a throne as a chair. We want four chairs. We also want four tables. Okay, so then that is the jobs that someone will come over here and start working on. Um, also, we have our carpenter shop, which we want. The only thing you can make beds out of in Classic Dwarf Fortress is wood. So we want beds. We need seven beds. Um, we could do workflow with this, but I think we'll just... 
we can just do it that way. Oops, what did I do? Um, so we're getting ready to dig out our bedrooms over here. You always need to be kind of careful. What is this? A swarm of flies. It's you need to be kind of careful that whenever you whenever you dig your fort that you don't put it on the first level. Um, for instance, I didn't come over here and build my fort right here because that would have been just one level up and I would have been outside. So like every time you remove a tree, there's going to be a hole in your fort. So it's always good to have at least a couple Z levels of like over here. I'm not real safe. Always good to have a couple Z levels of of mountain on top of your fortress. Yeah, triangles uh, are ramps. Did I miss something? I'm sorry. Cog is telling me equipment mismatch. He's probably hunting or something. Speaking of, we got to deal with that. Okay, so we have uh, pre clues over here making a bed. You can see Sean Bean just grab a rock and come over here and start making some doors and things. Um, speaking of butchery things. Let's make a butcher table. I should have done that before. Build. We're going to build a butcher. You. All right. Butcher. You. Workshops. Butcher. We're just going to throw him outside here. He can go right here. Make him out of Gabbro, which is fine. And with your butcher, you need to have a tanner, which is in, which is going to go right next to it. Basically, what he's going to do... That's fine. Uh, is he will go hunt... And, uh, or your hunter will hunt. He will butcher the thing. It'll go to the, um, tanner, which will turn the skins into tanned hides, which you can then have a leatherworks making yourself armor. Next to our butcher's shop, we are going to put in a corpse stockpile, which we can throw in. As soon as he clears out this ramp, we'll just throw it back over here. Why? Right here. You're gonna have a lot of corpses around your corpse stockpile. So, I like to keep it outside, because when you have corpses laying around, there's a chance they'll create some miasma. Miasma is basically a... It's like an old thing that people used to believe that whenever corpses rotted, it would produce, um, like a toxic mist or toxic gas. And, uh, that's what happens if you leave corpses around. Dwarves can get sick and puke all over, and it's not pleasant. Alright, let's build some doors. So, same as building buildings. We're gonna hit B, but we're gonna go to D for door. This has to have a wall adjacent to it to be a uh, proper, uh, to be put in. So we're going to put a door right there. We're gonna, it's, and once we hit enter, it's going to ask us what door we want to use. We're going to use our Gabbro door. Apparently, we only have one created. We make another one. Oh, no. We have a oh, that's bed. Uh, door. We have no more doors. If, uh, so I know there is another um, door coming, right? We told uh, Sean Bean over here to make us two doors. So we can use planning mode, which is shift P. And this will let us place the doors. It's like a planning mode thing. So once a door becomes available, he'll come over and he'll put it in there. And we can do that. Uh, we don't have a stockpile, do we? Let's, uh, let's put a hole there and a hole there. Let's make this pretty. Something like... We're just make a big stockpile room. How about that? Something like that. And there... Okay, so we'll do that. We'll have all of our stockpile stuff in here. We have we have lots of junk that's still sitting up here at the wagon. Like you can see, our chickens are still here. Our cats. We have we have like wood and our anvil still laying outside. So if something were to come steal or were to come rob us, now would be the time. Uh, once we get that stockpile room cleaned up, we're going to uh, grab all that stuff and uh, bring it back down here. This is also our meeting zone. Remember when I looked at uh, this? this thing, this zone, one of the options was a uh, meeting area. Basically, whenever our dwarves have no jobs, they will go hang around the meeting area. Which we will set up over here. So we're, let's, let's set up a, uh, a dining room. We're going to build uh, some tables. Right now, there's not very many of us. None of them have been made yet, so we're going to planning mode it. And let's set a table up. Um, how do we want to do this? It's just like set one. It's not, that's not in the middle. Put one there. We'll put one there. There. And there, I guess. And I'm going to put a chair next to him. One uh, one table per chair. I have one throne made already, so we can put a chair there. Um, same thing. Shift P. There we go. 
I'm really trying to be pretty, guys. I know it's, it's not it's terrible. I saw that Room Carnage. I did see that was uh was released uh, yesterday, two days ago. Now we could put in stockpiles in here. Um, actually, let's do that. Um, so let's go stockpile. Let's make a wood stockpile. This is our carpenter right here. So let's just put a stockpile of wood right in front of my carpenter shop. They can walk over. It's not a big deal. But this way, whenever he goes to make things out of wood, he can just grab from the stockpile right here. Same thing with that stone, which we're going to make an S, a stone stockpile, and just throw it down like right here. So if he needs to make something out of stone, he can just grab it from right here, and then he'll haul it into the stockpile, which will be right over here. Um, okay. There's a wheelbarrow getting moved in. Why is that getting moved there? I don't know. Hey, Craig Hughes. Arthas. <laughs> Sometimes it is about break time. Um, this is actually probably a good time for a break. So let's do that. So uh, we will uh, break a moment and uh, come back and uh, continue some things. I want to get... Um, I'm hoping today we can get things like taverns and... Um, and uh, temples and things done. We'll see. We're, we're, we're moving along fine, so. We'll at least get some bedrooms for the guys. So I will be right back. Give me just a minute or so.